Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to The Right Opinion, the home of a twat with too much free time, and Twitch streamers, a unique brand of creator. We've spoken about them a few times on this channel but there's always new corners to explore. And as always, that's what we'll be doing today. We'll be invading Twitch from the sidelines of YouTube. Because Twitch and YouTube, although having a lot of creator overlap, also have very different dynamics, which is why there are people who use both platforms. In a way, it seems there is a mutual understanding. Twitch understand that they probably can't compete with YouTube's upload features, and YouTube, although attempting to have their own stream assets, know that Twitch's specialized setup is a bit more of a step up from their own. Twitch and YouTube, however, due to that overlap, will have somewhat similar audiences, and that means that you can typically expect that you will find some underlying common commonalities in the popular content creators, one of those markets being attractive females. Now, being an attractive female does not predispose you to success, but in the glorious society that we live in, many younger individuals and slightly older individuals feel excitement from viewing people who may be attractive. Probably the YouTube embodiment of this creator is SS Snipewolf. You know that person who won a gaming award even though she barely games and she switched to reaction commentary ages ago. You know, she flossed, and although I can't say for sure, my judgement deemed it lacking the sufficient irony to be classed as remotely humorous. She's also doing it with very little gusto. I want more effort next time, SS Sniper Wolf. Now, I don't doubt that she has a great business mind. I mean, you kind of have to when you've been a criminal. But as a creator, her work does sometimes leave a lot to be desired. Cheese. Don't ask for extra cheese if you can't handle extra cheese. Is that on the bun? They put it all over the bun? That's too much cheese. This is where you draw the line. I mean, that burger already got cheese and then they dipped it into more cheese. How do you even eat this without getting a cheese face? This is what I class as the sort of attractive female content. And I'm not saying that obviously this is the sole prerequisite. There's a reason I haven't started doing face cam content yet. And it's clear that it's good clickbait that might grab external audiences. But in the core fan base, well, yeah, you can note some trends. The various moods after winning the award. Congrats, Leah. You deserve the award from our Wolfpack support. You look gorgeous. In the ceremony, by the way. Hearty eyes, hearty eyes, fire, fire, and then four pictures, uh, but I guess she looks gorgeous in all of them. So yes, SS Sniper Wolf may be the best example of the exploitation of that sort of appeal. However, very few people necessarily see her reflective of YouTube's cultural landscape. In spite of the significant views she pulls and the number of times she ends up on YouTube's trending. If I was to say women of YouTube, people would probably come up with a variety of answers. Lele Pons, Jenna Marbles, Lily Singh, etc, etc, etc. If you asked any standard creator about the women of Twitch, however, well, you'd probably hear an answer that encapsulates one of the more notorious genres. The word that some people like to use is thought. But here on The Right Opinion, we are respectful of women, and being a ladies' man has given me ample training for that. It's strange because there are a variety of female Twitch streamers, but ultimately the perception has been tainted by the existence of many things, including the commentator. <laughs> Oh, Twitch girls, the creme de la creme of online content. One thing that transcends platforms is the existence of irritating commentators who have opinions on everything. Damn people with opinions. Who would dare have those? Now, I don't mean the commentators are on Twitch necessarily. I mean, heaven forbid what would happen if that was the case. But in the last couple of years, because of the market, people have gone after the brand of Twitch streamer that is at the center of attention today and has definitely put them at the forefront of Twitch's image for better and for worse. Why though? Well, a lot of streamers like that have always existed on the platform, but the image really became synonymous with the rise of people like Zoe Berger, who not just became infamous for that behaviour, but also crossed the line over to the YouTube sphere, thus garnering the attention of many commentators at that time. Although Zoe Berger's fame was short-lived, the attention persisted, and eventually many female streamers became pretty popular amongst commentary circles on YouTube as well. Ultimately, this created a cycle, and the commentary that we witness today is a byproduct of that. However, people being popular is an interesting concept on its own, because as a popular creator, there is always a level of accountability to one's audience that a creator should feel. Nonetheless, the level of inherent accountability is often based off the appeal of the creator. I've spoken about this before, so I won't linger on it too much. Commentators and streamers have clashed on a few occasions. Probably the most notable one earlier this year was when Pokimane was called out by PewDiePie and some other creators for some rather poor behaviour. She did actually respond to it and 
Catherine was quite involved in drama following the situation. However, one thing that she did attempt to do was engage with the other side and not be combative. However, being pleasant is more of a liberty when your appeal is based off something not related to your direct demeanor. And that brings us to Alinity. Alinity, also known as Alinity Divine, is a 31-year-old creator residing in Canada, although she was initially born and raised in Colombia. She began streaming in 2012 and over the years has built a follower base of over 930,000. Not something to be jeered at. Her content consists of gaming streams and videos, discussion and some physical activities. This obviously makes some of the viewers very satisfied. On browsing her recent clips, I picked one named Six, which was a rather innocent video involving her dog. However, the thumbnail had been picked fairly carefully and it was not a wonder that this was her second most viewed clip of recent. For a long time, Alinity was just another female streamer doing her thing, but in the last couple years something changed, a run of instance that left her at odds with many people, particularly the commentator. Escalating most recently with many people calling for her removal from the platform due to the treatment of her cat. However, if this was the only instant, would people really be calling for her termination? Well, I think we should find out. Today I want to discuss exactly how Linity came to fame, how she came to notoriety, and exactly what led people up to the point where many think that she has to be stopped. It's a long story, but I assume you're ready because you got this far. Let's go. Alinity has been streaming for almost seven years. Now, it is difficult to find any comprehensive history. However, we can look at the growth of her channel, and one thing that struck me was that, providing the information I found was accurate, her growth came pretty instantaneously. She streamed every day for four to eight hours, with the main goal to raise the monies to ride a stable income for her lifestyle, given her university training as a nurse. Her main focus at the time was World of Warcraft, and she seemed to have a decent base of supporters that were committed. By mid-2013, she had around 26,000 followers but around 3.5 million views. She was somewhat known in the community and was involved in some camaraderie. In this clip she supposedly went on an e-date with another streamer and you can feel the romantic chemistry radiating off the screen. I forgot to give you these flowers when we first got here. I forgot them in the limo. That's where I just went right now but I would like you to have these flowers because oh, they're on, pretty on. and I, I gotta, I gotta put your oh. there. Okay. Oh, you got me flowers. Yeah. They're pretty. She also posted some pictures to Twitter, which received positive reactions from her audience. Generally, even in 2013, however, people had the impression that she wasn't exactly known for her personality. Many comments claiming that as people went, she was rather vapid. It kind of made me feel bad if I was accepting the idea that she didn't necessarily see herself that way. Although I kind of have a hunch she did know what she was doing, especially when she puts her feet pics on the market. If you guys are able to carry me to the 1900s, I'll give you feed pictures. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Nick, let's, let's we got it. We We're have in. To the 1900s. Dude, 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 dude. No, shut up. We're in. We can do that just two weeks. However, on the 17th of August 2013, she announced that she was done streaming, and therefore, that was the end of Alinity. Thank you for watching. I jest, I jest. I'm guessing this was something to do with someone called Bodobo. In this situation, which I admit I found rather hard to follow, it seems that Alinity wasn't happy with some of the things that Bodobo was saying about what she deemed to be her private life, and Bodobo, on the other hand, wasn't happy with how Alinity has been behaving with certain individuals and not being honest about details of her relationships. This ultimately led to a Skype call in which some strong words were exchanged. Is this what 2013 streamers did? I don't know. But immediately what we can see here is some early evidence that Alinity isn't exactly afraid of confrontation. In fact, she's not exactly the coolest of cucumbers. And you don't have any, any control over my life to start talking shit about me. What are these things I'm hiding? These horrible things I'm hiding. Tell me, tell me what they are, because I really want to know what it is that I'm hiding. Tell me what it is that I'm hiding. Can I talk now? Yeah, talk what it is that I'm hiding. Okay, first off, I don't know what, what it is that I'm hiding right now. Tell me. Holy shit. Now there is clearly a lot of context missing to this call and I don't know what happened behind the scenes. Alinity's outburst may come from a genuine place. But regardless of what happened, it's fair to say that many of us probably wouldn't have reacted like this just because someone was chatting bare shit. Alinity 
definitely doesn't come across as someone who takes these things in the most relaxed demeanor. Also, I thought I'd show you this cheeky clip. Keep this in mind for later. Okay. We know each other from a long time ago, and you know things about my past. Yes, I was married. Yes, I got divorced. Yes, I came to Canada on a sponsorship. And there's things about my life that I'd rather not discuss over the internet with people. Obviously, however, her content was more than World of Warcraft, and when researching, especially perusing Reddit comments, many people disputed her. Some branding her as a quote, twerk for subs individual who would exploit their rather impressive physique for their viewers. Others, however, defended her, saying that people were just looking for reasons to hate her because she was on that hustle. From all I've seen regarding Alinity, she didn't seem that bad. It seems there are many people who are worse. She also spoke openly about some of her mental health challenges, which is always content well welcome on the platform. In a 2014 interview, she said she was inspired by people like Shakira, another Colombian who uses her body to express herself. It's an interesting discussion. If someone feels empowered by expressing themselves in that way, then who are we to tell them what they should be doing? Well, you see, the dispute isn't necessarily about what we think. In this instance, a lot of the criticism has been directed towards Twitch, who are known for their pretty harsh guidelines. I spoke earlier about the differences and similarities between YouTube and Twitch, and one of them is definitely how the rules are enforced. I mentioned Zoe Berger, a person who was arguably the most sexual out of the female streamers. Well, when she was ejected, she went to YouTube to play her video games, and they let her remain on the platform, although they did seem to eventually suppress her influence. Twitch have always imposed quite a strict criteria, yet this strict criteria has regularly been alleged to have been undermined by the behavior of creators like Alinity and other female individuals that don't necessarily make their body the sole attraction for viewers, but certainly have it as a strong marketing point. It's walking the line on Twitch's policy for suggestive content. The greatest issue is that Twitch don't want to unfairly sanction creators, so normally it'd be good to side on the benefit of the doubt. However, if they don't act due to the benefit of the doubt, it might make the creators harder to control if they become established in the community. In Twitch's instance, their siding of the benefit of the doubt created a whole market for individuals who walked that line and they could only intervene when someone stepped a bit more obviously out of line like Zoe Berger and even then they created drama which caught the attention of the whole community and only pushed her counterparts further into the spotlights. However, it wasn't just directly from individuals like Zoe Berger who gained many people's attention. No, over the years, particularly 2016, another genre that came into light also caught people's attentions. Compilations. Compilations are when people combine select Selective clips that might highlight a certain behavior. Now, on the one hand, compilations are very helpful for people. They can be more entertaining than watching the bare boats content, and people might want to view these for a specific purpose. However, they can also be negative as they might provide people with the strength and perception of what might be representative of a creator. In this instance, it gave many people the idea that a lot of these creators were very sexual in their behavior. In these compilations was Alinity, occasionally known for her suggestive actions, finding herself a part of these compilations. Given these compilations were also highlights and therefore easier to watch, well, these videos caught on much more quickly and moved these creators not just towards the more critical commentators, but also basic reaction commentators. But the reaction didn't stop there. The thing is, with the growth of this genre, Twitch placed themselves in a predicament. They knew what would happen if they tried to enact rules against these creators who themselves bring a lot of traffic to their site. Although they are definitely the superior streaming site, they don't want to lose the established creators to YouTube who have a framework themselves. Oh, and Mixer, you know, that site that just acquired ninja kind of a big deal nonetheless normal creators and viewers don't have those vested interests nor do they have to provide the benefit of the doubt to these streamers this led to the rise in criticism that twitch was not enforcing guidelines fairly also given that these creators were all female many people complained that twitch was enforcing a gender bias with the feeling of preferential treatment held by many creators it began to lead to frustration and even resentment towards the streamers these people were using their body in a way that many people perceived they could not because they would simply be banned. Therefore, given their treatment, it likely gave many people the feeling that there was a license to mock these creators without feeling that they were punching down. Numerous videos on these creators popped up. However, this did not lead to many consequences other than the reinforcement of the notion of what many called Twitch thoughts. And then came the PewDiePie video. 
The PewDiePie video that actually caused this controversy wasn't actually one that was really solely centered around reacting to a single compilation video. No, YouTube's then largest creator released a video in which he tested an eye tracking device for various user submitted clips. For a part of the video, he was reacting to streamer fail compilations. And then the fateful comments were made. Oh my God, you see what happens? This is so annoying. Stupid Twitch thought. I just feel like they, they win over me, okay? And they're not gonna win over me. Stupid Twitch thoughts. No. Now, this was not the point that the clips of Alinity were shown. In fact, the clip of Alinity was on briefly earlier in the video. In reacting to his video, Alinity confirms this. Oh my god, it's everywhere! What is YouTube? That was me. Yes, well done, Alinity. It was you. Anyhow, she decided to continue watching, and although PewDiePie had not made the thought comment in direct reference to her clip, she felt it general enough to apply to her, and thus warranting a response. Oh my god, you see what happened? This is so annoying. Stupid Twitch thoughts. I just feel like they, they win over me, okay? And they're not gonna win over me. Stupid Twitch thoughts. No. S seriously? He just said that. I'm gonna copy strike this guy. Just for that word. Gonna copy strike him. Now the term thought is an abbreviation for that hoe over there. But however, before we have a discourse regarding this, it is important to emphasize that we speak the Queen's English here. We should not be using such petty slang as ho is short for whore, which begins with a W. Therefore, in my opinion, the proper abbreviation will be twat. Now, this is a term that isn't exclusive to Twitch. In fact, it seems to have yielded from hip hop culture, although its origins aren't completely certain. Either way, it crossed into the Twitch sphere due to this sect of females who became infamous for their appearance and behavior. Is it fair? Well, I mean with mine that this isn't a huge deal, I can understand why some people may be irked by the term. If someone is happy doing that with their body, then who are we to put them down? I guess the distinguishing factor between streamers like Alinity and, you know, Shakira is that it is a more direct interaction between the actual monetary support and what the person does with their body. Not to mention that Shakira is a great singer too. I mean, of course, the definition of something like a twat is sexual promiscuity, and I can understand that being labeled that on the basis of compilations might be a bit of an annoyance. But PewDiePie doesn't really use the word in a malicious or harassing way, and therefore any more action than criticism and discourse would seem disproportionate. But let's see. Does Alinity engage in criticism? Yo! Can we copy strike PewDiePie's latest video? Like, right now? No, you can't copy strike PewDiePie. Regardless of what he referred to you or your colleagues as, his content was fair use. And even if what he said pissed you off, a copyright strike was not the right way to respond. Why is it not, then? Well, it's an act of grief. And although sometimes an act of grief may be necessary when dealing with a malicious actor, most people would not interpret PewDiePie as having been malicious enough to want any sort of response like that. As something like that would be a breach of the guidelines regardless. His comment was clearly meant to be facetious. He follows it with how they're going to win over him. It's not the worst insult as insults go, and clearly not meant for literal interpretation. Alinity's reaction doesn't really stand legally, and it also doesn't stand morally. Unfortunately, even if conducted with a slightly more reserved mannerism than the previous behavior she was known for. The same rather vicious sentiment remained. It felt like her attempt to fully suppress someone for using a term that she didn't like and people identified that. It unnecessarily aggrieved him. And okay, sometimes people react disproportionately to certain things. Doesn't mean they're bad people, they may just not be in the right mindset. However, the strangest thing is, even though she was calmer than I had previously found, in a way, it made the whole clip feel worse. Rather than an uncontrolled outburst that a person might regret, it felt like someone smugly executing an act out of a spite. You can even see the slight grin on her face. It seemed like a dick move, and people don't like dicks. Wait, you know what I mean. And although we shouldn't judge someone's mindset by their outward demeanor alone, that's the impression many people will have. That's how we interpret intent. To add to insult to injury, she then goes back to talk about how much money she makes from copyright strikes. But afterwards, she said very publicly that she earns a good living doing this kind of thing. A company that's called Collab. And they either just sending me, they sending me $700 last month from copy strike hitting people. Good money. Good money. Stealing money. 
Although she's clearly talking about a claim here because you can't really make money off strikes because they take the video down. Everything considered, this pissed people off. PewDiePie's fan base included. And in case you weren't aware, PewDiePie has a pretty large fan base. I'm sure Linity was aware of that. You and of course, me. PewDiePie was too. We saw him reacting disproportionately against a very large creator with a dedicated fan base. It seemed that there was going to be quite a messy affair quickly. But what happened ended up being worse for Linity than possibly imagined. Have you heard of the phrase, kill him with kindness? Well, honestly, it's overused. A lot of the time, you will not be able to kill someone with kindness, because even when used metaphorically, you will typically sound sympathetic to the person you may be responding to, which will typically quell any drama and end up preventing harm done to either party. Or it will make you look like you're being too nice to someone who is, frankly, rather unpleasant. However, there are times when it is applicable, and there are times when you can be kind. If you're in the right, and you're kind, and the person in the wrong reacts with hostility. Ho oh, ho, God, does it look bad. PewDiePie, in spite of his controversies and occasional poor ways of handling them, does understand the danger of a fired up fan base, and how, if instigated further, could be attributed back to him. If handled wrong, PewDiePie might be accountable for a load of fans going ballistic on a female streamer's feed, which would not be a good look. As much as people are fired up about copyright, I'm sure he didn't want another Matt Hoss style court battle. The conflict would have ran much deeper and wouldn't have been worth it. So what he did was remove the clip immediately and chose not to contest it. That gave him a clear out of the drama. However, even with the clip removed, a copyright claim came in. Now this is where it becomes interesting and confusing because Collab DRM denied making the claim and said that they had reviewed the video and had deemed it fair use. However, PewDiePie looked at the claim and reported to Franco that it was Collab DRM, who then made a very strange statement. I also reached out to Felix, who confirmed, yes, it was claimed by Collab DRM, but also adding, I can't confirm if it was because of her clip or not. This, of course, because Collab DRM has the policy of it's not their responsibility to tell you what portion of the video. He also sent me the email that he received from YouTube confirming that Collab DRM did, in fact, claim his video. So it looks like it definitely did happen, but in Steve Bettinger's defense, separately without me confronting with this information, he emailed me to slightly change his response, saying Collab DRM never issued a strike on the PewDiePie video you're referring to. We reviewed the video and determined it to be fair use, which I will say is confusing because it seems that you're you're acknowledging that it was fair use. But now it appears definitively that the, the copyright claim did happen. It doesn't really seem to add up. Then three days later, PewDiePie uploaded a video where he states that although he wasn't sure that Alinity made the strike at first, she then took credit for it. Now, we weren't sure if it was uh, Alinity that actually did the copy strike or if it was just some random claim because I get those all the time anyway. But the day after, she made a follow-up to this where she sort of boasted about, yeah, it was me, guys. So, lots of confusion on the actual copyright claim front. However, there was little confusion from Alinity, who, following pressure from people, released another statement. This statement pinned the claim on the sexism within the streamer community, and the fact that PewDiePie's comment was the sort of thing that contributes to the harassment that many female streamers encounter on a daily basis. However, this hit an immediate roadblock. The problem was that this did not seem to be the instigating factor of the initial copyright claim. It didn't seem to be some emotional reaction spurred on by an instinctive response to misogyny. Paired with the comments made about her income, it seemed like an opportunity to use the comment as a scapegoat to make money. And no one, regardless of whether they have feminist sympathies or not, is going to be with you on that one. Although harassment would never be appropriate in that scenario, backlash from the situation has to fall somewhere at your feet for attempting to act outside what many would deem acceptable. You poked a sleeping lion with a sharp stick. I think it is a relevant discussion, given how reductive many of the compilations are, how it might give off the wrong impression, but ultimately, they are the largest contributors to it, and although PewDiePie understandably pledged to use the term more carefully in the future, the copyright claim is such a radical response, it completely distracts from whatever discussion you might want to have regarding terminology. She also adds this rather unconvincing complaint at the end about objectification, and although I can understand why someone might be uncomfortable being labelled a twat, given the differences between between taking dick from many men and behaving slightly sexually, I feel that Alinity has to be aware of the market that she appeals to and how that might affect how people interpret her content. There's nothing wrong with people behaving in a sexual manner if that's what they feel empowers them. That's what people like Shakira did. And there's nothing wrong with taking issue with unnecessary sexualization. 
but you can't have them both at the same time. However, the worst part comes when she shifts responsibility onto Collab DRM, who as representatives of the claimant would have very little additional reason to claim a video that they recognize themselves as fair use. Alinity herself seems pretty ignorant. I don't really know much about the laws, but I do know that I get money out of that. Like, it gives me money. So they do have to pay for it. Like, who's paying for that? I'm not really sure, but I'm guessing it's the content creator that is using my content on it. I really don't really, I, I honestly, I don't know how it works, um, but I, if I flag a channel, it gives me money. So if anybody wants to use my content, just ask me, you know, and please don't misrepresent me. Please don't call me names while using my content. It will get flagged by collab and I will get part of your, I don't know, your revenue for it or whatever it's called. This is a terrible clip, but there has to be some irony in the fact that she clearly didn't seek permission to watch PewDiePie's video, yet feels that people should ask permission to react to compilations with her in. I find it hard to believe that she would be too stupid to not notice that contradiction, as did PewDiePie and many other people. And I find this information to be completely redundant because she she said, I'm going to claim the video. The video got claimed. And then finally she took credit for getting the video claim. Then because everyone fired back at her, suddenly the story is different. Suddenly it's Collab's fault. Again, finally, Alinity. I'm sorry for calling you a Twitch thought. I will definitely be careful with what, using that word in the future. But you need to stop blaming other people. Stop blaming Collab DRM. Stop paying some sort of sexism narrative. Stop blaming me and admit that you what you did was wrong. It's really not that hard. PewDiePie apologized, and ultimately by doing that, put Alinity in a position where she would be expected by many to apologize herself, or at least come to some resolution. But she didn't. And this is where PewDiePie killed her with kindness, because she didn't have a clue in how to actually respond. In fact, her response was just further deflection onto her representatives, Collab DRM plus a load of waffle. The problem is that at this point PewDiePie had taken responsibility for his side so he basically had nothing else to add and therefore all the attention was thrown onto Alinity who clearly was not well equipped to respond or even hold her own on these matters. The only way she could reverse the situation at that point was being able to act like there were additional incidents that PewDiePie needed to be held accountable for which she definitely tried. She refused PewDiePie's apology and then attempted to deepen her victimhood by focusing on the semantics regarding his comments. Semantics Semantics are important, however, PewDiePie's apology and explanation for why he said it satisfied enough people to just make Alinity look unreasonable and unnecessarily demanding. So for you to do all of these things, right, and then for you to not accept my apology when I said sorry <laughs> twice, what do you want? You're just digging yourself deeper and deeper, and I'm not even pushing at this point. And with people having this negative perception, people decided that it was time to start digging, and digging, and digging. And whatever Alinity was being framed as in PewDiePie's original video was nothing compared to what follows. Showing your underwear on stream. That's our fault, right? And then clicking on full screen right after. Bending over with your butt on camera. That's our fault, right? You're just uh, looking at your butt hair in this video. You're not doing anything else. Eating a popsicle down your throat on camera. That's that's our fault, right? Because you had a sore in your mouth. That's why you did it, right? Oh, you're just playing games with the, the shortest skirt ever. That's our fault for having you looking at it in any sexual way, right? Oh, guys, I am just adjusting my camera right now. I'm completely unaware of what else is going on. If you have any sort of sexual intention towards this, uh, th that's our fault. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm just pushing my bra together to show how a push-up bra works. Uh, that's your fault for seeing anything sexual in that. How dare you? Essentially, Alinity attempted to conduct a mudslinging campaign against Felix, retweeting various negative tweets about him, which gave PewDiePie the impetus to bite back with his own claims. And remember that old clip about her not wanting to talk about her relationships? Oh dear, oh dear. There's this one clip where she very publicly admits to committing marriage fraud, that she moved to Colombia uh, and married this guy just so she could move to Canada. You don't make any money, you work a lot, so I was like, no, hell no. So I married a Canadian and I came to Canada. <laughs> and then I divorced him. <laughs> Unfortunately, Alinity was outnumbered, both numerically 
and logically, and somehow became the single greatest target and villain at the same time. How do you manage something like that? Surely, if you are the target, people will at least give you some sympathy. Well... When reflecting on a situation, we are typically sympathetic to people who become targets of the internet mob. Not because they haven't committed any wrongdoings, but because eventually you reflect on it and wonder how much of the drama they actually instigated, and how many people were just blindly hating them without asking any questions. However, with this situation, there has been very little sympathy in any reflection, and this is mainly because Alinity, despite receiving backlash from the fan base of one of the largest creators on the platform, managed to instigate almost every single incident. When you throw something at a person, they might see it as giving them license to fling back. And this is exactly what happened with Alinity. She tried to punch below the belt by talking about PewDiePie's other controversies, and PewDiePie spoke about her other controversies with much greater impact. There are a few reasons that this yielded much more impact. Firstly, PewDiePie has a greater fan base, but also a much greater social media presence all in all. Alinity, in spite of her following on Twitch, only had around 67,000 Twitter followers at the time of the controversy, which is slightly low compared to PewDiePie's then 16 million followers. Let's just say this led to some ratios. It also didn't help that PewDiePie has been the center of attention for ages, and therefore nothing that people said was actually news to anyone, and therefore he wasn't being really exposed other than through trivial rumors. Alinity, on the other hand, as a streamer who hasn't been involved in a drama that size, has all this dirty laundry that many people haven't seen go through the watch, and when people brought it into the light, it was news, and was pretty damn bad. This led to her becoming one of the internet's least favorite people, and when confronted regarding this, she once again flipped responsibility of her comments to people reporting her to the authorities. All his little community, his little nine-year-olds that have been blocking on Instagram, and I'm telling you guys, these are like nine-year-olds. Like, they're very young children. And now they're all falsely reporting me to the Canadian government. Now that's illegal. And although I probably wouldn't advise reporting her, in spite of the evidence, you know, people chat their shit to try and embolden themselves in front of their audience. It's hard to feel sympathetic to her complaints. Bragging about a crime in which there is a victim will never be overwhelmingly popular when people look at it with a critical eye. PewDiePie did have a lot of responsibility in the handling of the situation, which could have been misused greatly. However, many people would agree that he should be able to argue his case as well, particularly in response to anything that Alinity says. And because he was constantly on the retaliation, this gave him the opportunity to know what Linty had said and respond with more impact. Another huge issue was that Linty just went from one argument to another, basically taking consecutive L's on every single perspective. Her points of view were just an incoherent mess. You, when you're a content creator, you are responsible for a community. So it's completely fine for you to call me out with your community, but just because you're a smaller channel, I'm not allowed to defend myself, right? She's sort of insinuating that I should get uh, banned or something like that. She continuously argued the notion of responsibility while taking none of her own. PewDiePie continuously offered a ceasefire and she rejected it, maybe because she thought if the harassment became bad enough, it would help make a case for her victimhood. However, because she was seen as instigating every fan defending PewDiePie or attacking her was seen to be doing it because of her own statements, rather than because of anything PewDiePie actually said or did. To add to this, the only real point of view that she could argue herself as aggrieved on was the perspective of sexism. Now, in a way, you could argue that the gender perspective could give her a hard time. There is a lot of prejudice. But as said, many people were suspect that actually her gender gave her an advantage, especially on Twitch, particularly given the genre that she had rose to prominence in. And then to top it all off, she just said this. Imagine you guys you stream for five years full time i've gotten drunk i've fallen my butt has shown you know and twitch has been behind my back the whole time like hey it's okay you know just delete the clips you know we're cool i've been good with twitch i've never even had an, a 24-hour suspension i've never had a suspension on twitch and this irritated a lot of people because as mentioned earlier everyone knows about how twitch treat many streamers how harshly they enforce many of their guidelines to have this person breach the same terms of service and not face any consequences at all was enraging and undermined any argument of disenfranchisement coming from her throughout it all she delivered her words with the same very dispassionate tone and although it's important that you don't let your emotions 
interfere with your points of view too much because her argument seemed emotionally based when paired with her delivery it just seemed very uncomfortable and plain manipulative for many people i felt very upset this has upset me a lot she always has a trend of continuously attacking people's previous prejudices as a way to deflect current criticism and although people may be harsher on her for sure it doesn't mean she is above the criticism later on in the same stream she used people's least favorite racial slur the one beginning with the letter n of course and once again although not the most malicious manner given twitch's extremely harsh enforcement of the guidelines and the context of it being in the same stream this irritated a lot of people and further elevated how untouchable she seemed to perceive herself as you come in not saying that ever again? Okay. Well, I'm I'm part black, so I don't I don't see why the like why would they say that? Well, I wouldn't. Say, I'm like ten percent black. I don't think I. Whatever. Did she just use the Keemstar defense? Oh no. This does not seem good. You'd find very few neutral actors who defend her behavior at this point. But wait, there was one more publication willing to stand up against PewDiePie. Wait, no, never mind, it's Vice. I did actually respond to this article briefly last year in a video about Mr. Beast. To sum it up, it's really bad and arguably one of the worst cases of decontextualization there has been for a while. Although the concern of making sure that you do not frame any victim as asking for it is a concern that we should all pay attention to, I do not think the slippery slope from Felix's comments were there. And yes, for some reason, having the backing of a mainstream outlet wasn't a huge support winner. Alinity was being attacked on nearly every platform and her support just wasn't following through to many corners of the internet. However, she never backed down. Why wouldn't she? Let's ask that question. When someone becomes involved in drama, one of the most constraining factors ultimately comes down to your audience. I spoke about it right at the start. When you are a Twitch streamer whose appeal is partly your appearance, decorum is a liberty, and Alinity recognized that. Normally when you encounter drama where you receive substantial amounts of criticism, you would lose support. But if you head over to Alinity's social blade, you'll see that her growth was largely unaffected by the drama. That was exactly the same with Pokimane 2. Despite being criticized by the commentators very very harshly when it came down to the numbers there was very little change therefore if she didn't actually feel like apologizing well she had very little to lose by not she's in drama with someone who in spite of their prominence can't really cause any damage to the channel or the income that she's receiving partly due to the fact that she's on twitch and partly because her appeal is separate from her credibility no one expected her to be the voice of reason although many people would agree twitch should be treating people equally Unfortunately, that's not how it works, and as sad as it is, the drama isn't the greatest deal in the grand scheme of things. She had who she needed to on her side, who derived benefit from her entertainment that isn't compromised by the drama, and therefore they want to keep watching her. This gave her license to basically behave how she wanted to, and she did. However, there was one thing that was separate to her fan base, and that was the other source of support that was indispensable for her, Twitch themselves. Many people have argued that Twitch should have punished Alinity for for her conduct, yet Twitch haven't. And it appeared that she had them in her back pocket. And once the drama died down, most people have no reason to persist. There were more pressing dramas that caught people's interests, and the online community isn't exactly known for their attention span. However, there was one thing that would last, the impression that she left on many people. Impressions aren't important if we never have to come into contact with them again. And for a good year, we didn't. There was a brief situation at the end of the year where she accused a another streamer of sexual harassment and provided some corroborating screenshots. The other streamer openly denied these claims and retained a lawyer. People would have been foolish to drag her over this because they are quite serious and it seems that it's still an open case, but there have been no updates since around November last year, so I guess we'll just wait on that one. However, it was not the end of community run-ins with Alinity, and everything that had happened in the past would now come back to bite her. In the past, many people had accused Alinity of throwing her pussy around. 
However, few would have been able to call how literal this phrase would be applied, because on the 18th of June 2019, Alinity was doing what she normally does on Twitch, streaming, and her cat obstructed her game of you. And like any sane, normal human being, you don't let the pets get in the way. She responded by taking the cat and throwing it over her head fairly abruptly. This clip began to spread throughout the internet, and like the internet, they then found more clips regarding Alinity and her cat and her other pets including this very charming one where she decides that her cat's in the mood for a cheeky drink, a nice cocktail of vodka and saliva. It then hit reporters like Keemstar and then Peter, the controversial animal rights group with questionable hot takes. However, the take this time was pretty al dente. They were not satisfied with Alinity's behavior and they wanted Twitch to take action. Like Mount Vesuvius, the dormant community erupted into a united call of criticism. This was really the perfect opportunity because there was no way that Alinity could put the blame on the cat and therefore there was no defined enemy for Alinity to victimize herself against. In light of these claims and the corroborating footage, her local Local Animal Protection Society launched an investigation into her contact with the animal, and it was not looking good for her. So, what does she do? Well, she did the unthinkable. She apologized. In these tweets, she apologizes for her, quote, lapses in judgment and commits to complying with any animal abuse investigation while stating that her cats do live in a loving environment. This could have been over. This could have been it. But people weren't prepared to let it go. And it was even less likely to have been let go when Twitch decided that they weren't going to take any action at all. On first glance, maybe a warning would suffice. But new evidence came forward regarding Twitch's treatment of streamers. One clip regarding another streamer who went went by the name of Bebe, who was seemingly banned for 14 days following a similar incident in which she tossed a cat over her head. She put out a statement regarding this hypocrisy where she seems to confirm that a temporary ban was placed on her. This video comparison relating to it then spread fairly quickly and caused further outrage among critics. Then the videos came. They came fast and they came hard. Harping on Alinity for her behavior and her privilege and attacking Twitch for their double standards. There was not really much defending to be done. And although some people had actually defended her actions, few people could actually defend Twitch if they gave her another pass. Especially with all her previous actions and comments that Twitch is giving her exemptions from any actual retribution. People are reaching the stage where they ask how much more will a person like Alinity need to do to actually see any action taken against her. The weird thing is, I don't think this would have been a huge controversy if she'd never been involved in the controversies in the previous year. And in a way, if you're a stubborn person, it might feel better to stand your ground, even if everyone hates you. If you can retain your fan base while still being a little belligerent, then it might feel validating. However, when your future relies on the fact that you're walking the line between what might be acceptable and what might not be, then people will obviously see these situations as an opportunity to call on you to face repercussions, and those calls will not go away. Nonetheless, there is also inside information that we might not be aware of. One of Twitch's heads of media put out a tweet where they stated that they were in favor of Alinity's suspension from the platform for a certain amount of time, but ultimately had no authority to make that call, which was to be frank rather concerning. On top of this, much like the racial slur she had made, this was no longer talking about suggestive behavior that made her and others popular. This was unambiguous. This is not something that they would have set any standard for other streamers in the genre. This is a blatant exception made by Twitch, and the fact that she's the beneficiary of this has only made her more unpopular. How bad is it? Let's have a discussion. When someone commits a wrongdoing, we like to see them held accountable for their actions. It's a simple enough notion, and when we feel like they have paid their dues, then we might be open to not hating them anymore, depending on their conduct and how they feel about it. Sometimes, if an authority fails to take action, we might hate the authority more than the actual person. In this instance, if this had been an isolated incident, it might be a scenario of hating the game rather than the player. However, with the fact that Alinity had openly admitted to being on somewhat chummy relationships, with the Twitch authority, it basically made her part of the game that many people absolutely loathe. 
Alinity isn't ignorant of what she's doing. She's completely knowledgeable of the privilege that she has obtained, and in many ways highly indulgent of it, provoking breaches of the guidelines that she must be aware of. On one stream, she takes a picture of her buttocks, with the camera shot reflecting onto the stream. No action was taken. In two other streams, she was reported to bring up porn on the screen. However, these were accidental, so she was let off, which is fair enough, but still something to take note of. And when called out on this treatment, she has regularly attempted to make herself the victim from her position. And although the stereotypical branding of a twat I can understand might irk someone and even put them down in a way, it feels like a small drawback in a role that is clearly derived due many benefits of the market and many benefits of the doubt that many would agree you do not deserve. Honestly, if Twitch punished her at this point, she might catch a bit less flack in the future. But because Twitch have failed to take action in the past, people will now be looking for reasons to campaign for her suspension on the platform. Now, there are two reasons why this may not matter to Alinity. First one being if she completely avoids these controversies in the future. Now, this is slightly doubtful given her record of controversies and how abrasive she seems to be, whether by impulse or calculation, she does seem to annoy people. And on top of this, whenever something occurs, it seems to provoke another wave of people searching for other related incidents that piles on pressure for Twitch to take action. So I doubt this will be the last time we hear of her. The second condition is that Twitch actually are so tight with Alinity, they will never take any action no matter what. I think this is a more plausible condition, but it would certainly depend on the extent that Alinity pushes the boundaries. The only rational reason that I perceive they keep people like her on the site during these incidents is due to the possible prospect of encouraging competition. Obviously, that excludes other theories like deep personal connections or possible blackmail, although the evidence that there is some deeper link is quite compelling in itself, given that many streamers have reported that they've been banned for talking about the incident alone, and there are many rumours and claims that there does seem to be some coherence to. The question is, when a competitor comes along and people can judge a platform on the basis of morality rather than practicality, who will Twitch back? I do wonder how much longer it'd take for Twitch to feel like they'd be losing more than they're gaining from keeping Alinity on the platform without any punishment. Honestly, when you do nothing, it's hard to get people to boycott your platform. But this animal maltreatment thing seems to be the closest she's ever been to actually being impacted by controversy. And even then, she's remained in the green because people don't feel bad supporting someone whose appeal isn't inextricably linked to how they treat animals. And unfortunately, the fact that her audience, nor Twitch, is prepared to react, she'll probably continue to behave recklessly. Now, to be fair, if the authorities who are investigating this animal maltreatment case give her a bit of a scare, oh wait, no, never mind. If the authority finds this, then I can't act as if I have a greater insight to the home life of a cat. But I don't really understand how they can say this didn't have, quote, malicious intent while throwing a cat over the head or spitting vodka. Like, okay, she didn't intend to cause any harm, but it's still reckless and stupid and a bad thing to do on screen. I don't think that was the point that people were trying to make. And you know what? I don't want to see her lose her pets over these incidents. I think that would be a disproportionate reaction. But as reports go, you really downplayed the incidents. I mean, you don't even say what they were. I'm not going to give her stick if Alinity pledges to treat her pets better, and I do believe she has the capacity to, even if it's just for the sake of protecting her career. But it's important that people are actually informed of what a person has done, so they can judge it from an informed perspective. But regardless of how she treats her pets, when it comes to treating commentators and other creators, who may give her criticism, particularly audiences, Alinity sees no consequence from being defensive, abrasive, and confrontational. So chances are when these situations transpire in the future, she will continue to be that way. She has no motivation to change. And until she does that, she will be that way. And I mean, ultimately, being rather unpleasant doesn't preface you not being right. You could be unpleasant and completely right. It's just Alinity wasn't. In my opinion, she has been completely wrong. And her double down on it has only been done out of personal pride. Where there are any behavioural causes that play into it, whether her mental health may be involved is another question. But regardless, her actions 
and responses to criticism give off the impression that she does not understand the responsibility that she has misused as a public figure, and thus does attract rightful criticism from the basis that she might hurt someone else again due to that lack of understanding. As for Twitch, I think they should have taken action against her, given all the liberties they permit. However, this seems to be a constant problem with all larger platforms, that anyone with significant clout receives special treatment, while people at the bottom are constantly being weeded out by the moderators. Everyone's been the victim of that, unfortunately, although I really do question what they would have lost by temporarily banning Alinity this time round. It's not really related to the market or a standard that you might set. Having a rule for not throwing cats seems fair enough. And I really doubt many people would have sided with animal cruelty. And I really doubt that Alinity would have been able to rile up a narrative of injustice or move a majority of the market over to a competing platform. YouTube isn't quite equipped enough to win over a lot of the Twitch streamers. And Alinity doesn't seem like a person with a huge influence over other Twitch names. It does really make me wonder why if there's something a bit more personal going on. It would not surprise me. Either way, Twitch's continuous protection of Alinity with no repercussion at all will continue to rub people the wrong way, and the fact that Alinity is very aware of it will make her much more contemptible for people who observe these situations. As for the viewers, there will be many people who unconditionally support her. I have a hunch that there are also many people who acknowledge her character slightly flawed, but enjoy her content nonetheless, and that will continue unless she does something really, really bad. What a fucking but I don't think she would go that far. And what about me, her critic? All these critics. Well, once upon a time, the hatred she may have received may have been due to the sneering elitism towards the type of audience she appealed to. However, five years on... And she has given people many additional reasons to dislike her. At this point, there can be little doubt that Alinity's position of privilege, pride and pernition has made her one of the most unpopular persons on the platform. But as long as she's on that platform, people are powerless. And damn right she knows it. But there's one thing guaranteed, they will be waiting. So that was the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I had fun, a lot of fun. This was a long one, but uh, sometimes they need to be long to revisit all these ideas. I'd love to give a big shout out to the editors. Once again, I'm sure they did a great job. I could never understate that. I'm really looking forward to seeing the finished product and go and check them out and send them some love on that behalf. I need to give a big shout out to my Patreons. The $10 Patreons plus are on screen right now, but I do have some special, special people that I need to give a special, special shout out to. These Patreons include my $50 Patreons, Caroline, Nico Deschamps, uh, Rocket Ralph, Sarah Elizabeth, Sam Hullabaloo, and the Spectre Angel. Three, $300 Patreons, Brandon Junk, Adam Michael, and Christopher Carras. It's a very nice name, Christopher Carras. I think Christopher Carras is the newest Patreon, so welcome to the crew. We've got a nice little entourage pulling up right now uh, that I'm very proud of, and I appreciate all the support you guys give. If you want to reach me, you can contact me on Twitter, at The Right Opinion, Facebook too. I've also got a Discord all the links to those will be in the pinned comment if you want to follow them there. Otherwise, I don't think I have too much else to add. I hope you guys are doing well as always. And um, I do hope you have a lovely, lovely day. Take care, my friends. I'm The Right Opinion, and I'll see you in the next one.